lower back pain stretches. How do you know which ones you should do and which ones you shouldn't do? There are so many lower back pain stretches out there on the internet, uh, lower back pain stretches on YouTube, on Google, and some of them are probably good for you and some of them probably aren't. In fact, there's so much information that can be a little bit overwhelming knowing which ones to do and which ones not to do. And so that's what I'm gonna describe for you in this video. I'm gonna help you learn which lower back pain exercises you should do if you have a certain type of problem and which ones you should avoid. And if you have a different type of problem, which ones you should do and which ones you should avoid. Now, if you find this video helpful, give it a like or a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. So first of all, why as a physical therapist who makes a living off of doing physical therapy, basically giving away the trade secrets and telling you which exercises to do and which ones not to do. Well, first of all, if all you're getting from a, your physical therapy is a sheet of exercises that looks something like this, then you're probably not getting the full value. Then you're probably you know, not getting what you should be getting out of your physical therapy. And it might be time to look for something different, that there's much more to physical therapy than doing stretches. The other reason is that if all you do is stretches for your lower back pain, you might get some relief, but it's unlikely to continue over the long term. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But first of all, what are the stretches you should do for lower back pain? Well, basically there are three different types of stretches, classifications of stretches, if you will. Um, and it corresponds to the different directions that you stretch. So in general, there's forward bending stretches or flexion stretches where you round your spine out like that, extension stretches where you're doing backwards bending, and then side to side or rotational stretches, which are sort of classified as one because side bending and twisting occur together in the lower back. So those are things like bending to the side or twisting side to side. So first of all, the flexion exercises. What are they for and you know, who would benefit from them? And the flexion exercises, uh, you may have heard them called Williams flexion exercises. That's kind of the way they were typically named, but there are more exercises that round out your spine. And really, they're used for people who have trouble when they bend backwards. Perhaps you have spinal stenosis or arthritis or degenerative disc disease. You have trouble standing and walking for long periods and you get relief when you sit down. These are the type of exercises that are probably for you. And in fact, you'll find with a lot of these exercises, the big overarching point is do what makes you feel good. But if bending backward hurts and bending forward makes you feel better, do exercises that help you bend forward. So some of those may be laying on your back, pulling one knee up to your chest, or two knees up to your chest, or doing a little pelvic tilt like this where you tilt your pelvis back and flatten your back out on the floor. Those are all flexion type exercises on all fours, rocking back and doing the child's pose like that, that rounds out your back, or doing the, the cat-cow exercise where you go up, you go down. This is extension, this is flexion, the cat portion of the cat-cow exercise. So what about extension exercises? What are those and who should use them and you know, what are they good for? Well, just the opposite of flexion exercises, extension exercises or McKenzie exercises, extension exercises are typically used for people who have trouble when they're bending forwards. For example, if you're sitting for long periods, if you uh, have trouble when you're bending down, and a lot of people with extension problems actually also have those problems. But you know, these are typically better for younger people, people who have a herniated disc and you know, are younger in age, um, people who are taller typically have more problems with flexion because when they sit in standard height chairs, their back's more rounded out, and so they're sitting like that more of the day. Um, so those are kind of the typical classifications of people who would benefit from extension type exercises. And one of those is simply just standing extension, bending backwards. Now, you probably want to avoid whether, you, uh, whether you're a flexion person or an extension person, you probably want to avoid going way, 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 way back to end range. That's just not really normal and not good for your back. But you know, a little bit of backwards moving like that, just getting the joints moving, oftentimes feels pretty good, even for people who have you know, an extension problem, because it just kind of takes the pressure off the muscles in your lower back. 
And sometimes that just kind of feels good to do a few repetitions with that. So like I said before, the general rule of thumb, if it makes you feel better, it's probably okay to do. Now, other extension exercises, these are typically more on the body. So laying, just propped up on your elbows like that. If you can do a little bit more than that, kind of press it up on your arms. If you can do a little more than that, pressing all the way up, kind of like a cobra. Now, you still probably, again, don't want to hyperextend your back. It should be more of a smooth extension where you're making a nice smooth extension curve, not hinging from one spot in your lower back. That can set you up for problems later down the line. So those are the extension type of exercises for lower back pain. Now, what about the side-to-side -side type of ones? Now, those involve exercises where you move to the side like that, and that's actually a pretty good exercise um, if you have one leg that's taller than another, if you have a hip or an SI joint that's rotated and one leg appears higher, one hip appears higher. Um, if your spine, if you kind of stand, if you notice in the mirror that you stand a little bit like that, or if you have a scoliosis, you know, people with scoliosis really benefit from stretching in one direction, side to side. Not both directions, but in one direction away from the side that they're tight or away from the convex portion of their curve. So those are the people who benefit from the side exercises. And one is just a stretch like this where you stand and reach your arm up in the air. It stretches your quadratus lumborum muscle on the side of your spine. You can also kind of combine that with a hip flexor stretch like this, where you can get the psoas portion of your hip flexors. And then there's the rotation type of side to side exercises. The most common one that you see with this in most typical sort of physical therapy for lower back pain um, programs is the laying down exercise called the lower trunk rotation where you move your knees from one side to the other side, just back and forth like that. And actually that's not an exercise that I'm a big fan of. Um, I've got a whole video about why rotation or twisting in your back is not that good. And you can watch that one for you know, a better description, but basically the joints of your lower back, they kind of sit inside one another, and so they only have a few degrees of rotation available at each, at each level before you start to sort of twist on your discs and create torsion that really isn't good for you. So just teeny little bits of side-to-side of -side movement if you're doing that lower trunk rotation where you're moving more at your hips, kind of stabilizing your lower back and just moving side-to-side -side at the hips a little bit is okay, but you really don't want to get a whole lot of twisting motion in your spine. So there you go, um, kind of the general exercises that people use for lower back pain and a good way to tell which ones might be better for you and which ones might not be better for you. Now, again, that probably won't solve your whole problem, that something caused your lower back to get stiff in the first place. And if you don't figure out what that is, the stretches will help for a short period of time. They'll relieve some tension. They'll take the pressure off the joints, take the pressure off the discs, but eventually that pain may come back. And if that's the case, you really want to get down to the root cause of what caused that problem in the first place so you can make the pain go away for good and not just keep it having coming back over and over and over. And that's really what we help people do here at More For Life is to find the root cause of their problem so it doesn't keep coming back over and over and over. Additionally, sometimes you're just too stiff. You've got trigger points or tension that's built up in the muscles. No matter how hard you stretch, you just you can't get that um, to release by itself. And sometimes you need some hands-on treatment, whether it be myofascial release or joint mobilization or spinal manipulation or dry needling, lots of different tools that you can use to loosen up the muscle. And again, those aren't permanent fixes either, but they help you to be able to do the stretches that you need to do so that you can get back to doing the things that you want to do. Now, if you tried some of these exercises and you feel like you still need a little help or you just have no clue why your back pain came on in the first place and you'd like to give it figured out, um, if you're here in St. Louis, we'd appreciate it if you reach out to us. And if you're somewhere else, um, you know, we can maybe help you find someone in your area. And if not, um, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a like so that other people can see it and we can help more people inside of St. Louis and outside. Thanks for listening and have a great day.